We finished our shakedown slash sea trial slash sail testing voyage. And what did we learn about our boat? Firstly, we need some sort of self-steering. Well, we, we'll ask him. We'll ask if we can buy it from him and make a deal. Beautiful day. Sorry. Well, your tobacco no está registrado en México. No, it's registered in Mexico. We noticed that our young neighbor on his sailboat had just the wind vane that we were looking for, a hydro vane. We went over to say hi and to ask if he would be interested in selling or trading it up somehow. The hydro vane was nice, but also his boat wasn't bad either. A sturdily built Contest 34. Yeah, because the, the rigging looks in good condition. You pull the pin, that makes it move, and then just to adjust, you also try to move this the adjust the intensity of the steering that you want, and this is, you adjust your, your course by just pulling. You put it right to the wind and your course. When you're on course, you put it to the, the wind direction that it is, and then you just click into action, and that's it. Uh, I'm free there. And free there, yeah, you have to free this, you have to free there. Lots of pins. Yeah, see, do you want to see how it works? Yeah. Look. Pull that pin. Like this is going to work. It's supposed that uh, you put this in the direction of the, the wind, wind, where you want to have the wind. Yes. So right now, the wind is coming from there, so it's going to move. Yes. And look, look down. I don't know, but I don't want to force it. Yeah, <laughs> there's not a lot of wind. Ah, no, it's because this is, uh, yeah, that's off. Exactly. You have to increase Okay, okay. you have so to now adjust that as well. Yeah. Okay, Whoop. now it's going. Yeah. Suffice it to say, he was not interested in selling his beauty of a wind vane. It's very good for it is the... Uh, what do you call it? Either the lithium or the, the silicon lubrication. Very good for it. Mm. When you're not using it, when you finish using it, you get some... some uh, oh yeah, I have a lot of and that kind of... Silicon and you just... Look, what I want to ask you is like here, I just have like a, una placa de acero inoxidable. Sí. Que es de este tamaño. Sí. ¿Crees que es suficiente para sí. sostener? Sí. No se iba a romper la fibra. No. Bueno, no se ha roto por el momento, pero. No. The more, the better, but. El max, el, el más, man, no, no, no se va a romper. Sí, porque yo pensaba que iba a ser que poner una no, madera larga. Los lo, lo, lo transoms de los bajos son, son buen fer. Especialmente si lo metes por el, por el medio. Okay, I, 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 esto, esta zona está muy fuerte. And now began our time at the anchorage, being like a bucking horse trying to shake us off its back. Like if you're looking at the rain, like I can see it's just like it's moving that way for now, but... We started the engine for safety and ended up scrambling up the anchor in the middle of the squall to find a new spot. Barely because we were way too close to shore for comfort. <laughs> for about a month, almost every day, towering cumulus nimbus clouds gathered in the sky overhead in the afternoons to bring the anchorage sudden high winds and rain. We had moved out to the peripheral anchorage now. If you ask me, you know, you saw the dinghy that's there? More room to let out extra chain and to do maneuvers. was coming to Isla Mujeres soon with his boat. He asked us if, while swimming around the bay, we could find the old engine block for a mooring that he knew about from years ago.
find the reported engine block, but we did find an old barbecue and a couple of other moorings that we inspected. While at Isla Mujeres, we did our best to enjoy the beautiful mangroves surrounding the anchorage and took a peek at the remaining sea life surrounding its outer edge. We filled up what we call our little day tank with diesel and prepared to collect some fresh water at the fuel dock. It costs just about $10 US to fill up as much as our boat can hold, and we never need to do this more than twice a month. Number two on our shakedown discovery list was all the engine problems. The biggest issues we're having in the engine bay here, when we go to start the engine, if the fuel line is not primed, diesel is not being pushed into the engine fast enough, we have a really hard time starting it. So not only is diesel going everywhere in the bilge, but because our diesel system, our fuel line, our pump, our diesel pump is not fully functioning, it makes it dangerous. We can't start up the engine very quickly and or at some point we're going to run out of diesel because I can actively see diesel fl free flowing <laughs> that's dripping right now, even when the engine's off. So we either have to take it off completely and replace it with a little 12 volt pump or we need to seal it up just use what we have and, and seal it up maybe put some gasket maker on it maybe it's just the gasket leaking then we've jury rigged up a removable zip tie here on the throttle the engine really wants to go into high throttle it puts itself giving itself a lot of gas so we put a zip tie to to keep it at mid-range and Unfortunately, the other day when we had a, uh, a lot of wind, a squall came through, I was down here trying to open this to give the boat, to give Robbie some more gas as we were trying to maneuver away from another vessel, and I couldn't open it anymore. Open, off. You know, this turns off the engine, this gives it more throttle, this zip tie, I could not open it in a high pressure situation. <laughs> and I almost put our boat on the beach or on another boat. So usually, of course, there would just be the throttle cable that comes and attaches here and from the cockpit, we can control this. I think we can get this built while we're here at Isla Mujeres. Then the secondary thing is to find all the, the sources of the oil leaks, but that's a long-term project that uh, we're not going to crack this engine open until we have another engine, I think. We only have access to some used accelerator or engine control cables, which meant that we could do something, but not everything with them. Uh, neutral. The movement was strong enough to control the accelerator, but it was definitely not strong enough to control the gear shifter. Okay, this is neutral. Yep. Forward. Yeah, that goes really fast into like giving it gas. Yeah, that's giving gas. Yeah. It's neutral. When it's straight. Yeah. That's forward gear, you hear clack. That's yeah. forward gear. That's reverse gear, and then you can ex basically for us. 
we'll keep it like that because the gear doesn't matter. Yes, we can't put it into gear from here. I, I think basically there it doesn't, and then from there you can go to there. That's half, and okay. you can go get a little more if you really need it. Yeah. But pretty much that's there, and then that's back to. Yeah, when we go in the blue aerial, we we are pretty much giving our engine its max that we want right now. Because we can we can feel the engine slip when you go. I think if it like warms up in the beginning and then the boat's like moving, and after a while, like when, once it warms up, I think you can get. But if you're straight away like yeah, so if we just some ugly ugly stuff. It's less dark than before. That's your turn. It's not meant to hold that heavy of a weight. It's meant to hold a GoPro. Just for the record, we were here first and he's anchoring stupidly close to us. You might as well just anchor. You should probably just anchor in the in the uh, unmarked channel because the whole thing is a, is a hurricane hole, the, uh, including the channel. Look, now we're turning back. And where's he? Good job, Robbie. No, that's not done yet. This is... <laughs> Ooh, filling up our water jugs. All right, this morning we pulled up the anchor. We're heading back inside. Heading back into the lagoon for protection. Not bad out here right now though. Yeah, there's a 90% chance nothing, it doesn't get too much worse than this. But if it gets worse, we don't really have a way to control the situation. So we're going for safety. Another afternoon, another squall coming. As the ominous cloud passes over us, the boat direction changed. We are slowly pointing northward. Oof, there's some lightning in that cloud. It's really nice and cool. We've been lounging on the floor all day out of heat exhaustion and now it's just like a cool breeze with our new amazing throttle cable we could now control how fast we wanted to go in forward or in reverse from the cockpit imagine that it was time to pick up anchor and to get back out to the proper outer anchorage like some respectable sailors Spot yeah, me. you came right away when we anchored to say hello to make me feel like not jumping in the water. I can though... get rid of him for you if you want. <laughs> He's so big. It's almost like he's done this before. You Some, think uh, that the, the falling, flashing spoon would really trigger him but that made me feel more comfortable about maybe dipping my toe in the water if he if he doesn't go after the shiny spoon it's yeah, the cleanest shower you'll ever take i'm getting enough rain to actually clean myself and we're filling up the buckets so we're gonna have to some days Robbie was off the boat working, so it was a little intimidating knowing that i couldn't maneuver with the engine very easily alone but choco and i got along well at anchor he loves his fancy but super cheap and simple solar cooked meals that I make him. It's 
just a little bit of sunshine left. When Robbie's gone, the only meat that gets cooked is Choco's food. It's three hours or so in the solar cooker. Very fancy dog meal. Well, actually it's two meals. Add some water to half of that and he eats usually one chicken leg over two days. He's very picky. He won't eat more, he won't eat less. A very old Tyrannosaurus Rex on the boat. He's so cute, his little tail that's been growing. I wonder how he lost it, how, what we probably did to snap his tail off. Probably oh, Choco. Probably Choco. He likes to, I think he lives in your fishing rod set. Ooh. There he is. He's looking very fat today. He just sits there and makes me not want to go in the water. We think that perhaps the resident giant barracuda has vision problems. Choco, don't fall in the water. That guy will eat you. As he wouldn't go after any of Robbie's lures. He kept on lurking, and Robbie kept on trying to snag him. Robbie's mum and Lito came to visit us in the anchorage. So we're going to go sailing south of Isla Mujeres. Enjoy the island a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. And hopefully, don't drown ourselves. Oh, Ravi. Pull up the anchor in a second. With the strong Gulf Stream current running north up alongside the island, the waters here are often crystal clear and the most striking shade of blue. With the parents coming to visit, we had a good excuse to simply enjoy the waters surrounding the island. We were moving at a perfectly leisurely pace and wanted to see what the belly of our boat looks like under sail. Finally you get to see what it looks like.
We stopped in at the popular tourist destination, where a pair of remoras were hanging out under the boat. And then we were hit by the usual afternoon squall. While they were visiting, we also celebrated Lito's birthday by renting a golf cart and doing the island's most common touristy trip. <laughs> Driving out to the southernmost tip and ogling at the beautiful ocean out on that end. If I was running a golf cart rental company, I would make all my vehicles electric with solar panels on the top. They're a lot of fun, but the island is small enough that you can do the loop in about 45 minutes. And there are so many tourists driving in literal circles here each day. Even without having to pedal my bicycle or to walk very far today, we were all feeling the heat. Robbie made one last attempt to catch that pesky barracuda, but pulled up a snapper instead. What are you doing? You playing with your rod out here? Yeah. I guess he went for the shrimp. Couldn't resist. Mmm, nice frying size too. It's small, eh? Good size snapper. Size mangrove. Eh. If you let go, it has been eating what you've been throwing away. Oof, look at his pointy teeth. That's life at Isla Mujeres, but that's not all we've been up to. Stay tuned for next video as we attempt to completely change our sailing lives as we know it. Thanks for watching. Did he just say brother? Look, his tail is growing. His tail is growing? Slowly it's growing. He must be so lonely. Only gecko on the boat. <laughs>